Good I'm Kent Stewart, the Director of University Relations. I'll uh, just make a couple of housekeeping comments first. And one thing I can't resist saying, it looks like a much more intelligent crowd than we usually have at these events, <laughs> because people actually had enough sense to sit down. So <laughs> congratulations to you. Um, the housekeeping comment is that we, this morning, are going to hear from the first of five finalists. And I just thought I'd let you know we'll be doing this with each one of the finalists, both the reception and the news conference like this. We uh, are on a tight schedule, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time here, but uh, we're privileged to have with us this morning our own Dr. Tisa Mason, who's our Vice President of Student Affairs, and Tisa will share a few comments and then take questions. So, Tisa? Thank you so much, and really, I want to, it's just amazing to look out and see my colleagues here, and I appreciate your support and, for, and your interest very much for you showing up, so thank you. I just want to say good morning and let you know that I'm extremely grateful, honored, and excited to greet you as a candidate for the presidency at Fort Hayes State University. Over the past 30 years, I've had the opportunity to be a part of many diverse institutions of higher education, including a small private, four-year commuter, two state regional comprehensive universities. These diverse institutions afforded me the opportunity to work with seven different presidents, observe their leadership styles, and shape my own philosophies and work style. Interestingly, all but one of the institutions experienced presidential transitions, provo providing me with more opportunity to learn. Additionally, I spent nearly 10 years leading a 130,000 member national nonprofit and foundation. But today, I really don't want to talk about what I've done. I want to talk with you a little bit about who I am. And core to who I am is someone with a strong personal commitment to higher education access. I am a first generation college student. My grandfather had a sixth grade degree education. I understand the life changing difference a college can make on a student and their families, no matter what their age or their background. My high school guidance counselor counseled me to tell me that I wasn't smart enough to go to college, that my family couldn't afford it. I went to college. I graduated with departmental honors. I paid off my college loans. <laughs> and then I went on and I earned a doctorate and eventually had the privilege of coming here to serve as your Vice President of Student Affairs. Having lived in Western Kansas for the past six years, I feel my determination, my drive, and my hard work is really reflective of the values of our community and who we are and why we are successful. I possess a deep commitment to a student-centered focus. Throughout my career, I've been consistently working collaboratively with faculty, staff, students, alumni, community, state, and national leaders. Student success is truly my magnetic north. As we work collectively to help students succeed in college and beyond, both for their own life and for the welfare of the state of Kansas. I am energized by the truly innovative and entrepreneurial spirit of this university. Indeed, it's what attracted me to Fort Hayes State University and why I wanted to come and work here. I already know that our faculty, staff, students, alumni, and community members are committed colleagues and friends. I do not need to learn how hard they work to make a difference in the lives of people and the communities they serve. For these are things I already know and I experience every single day. Serving as the Vice President for Student Affairs at Fort Hayes State University has been a life-changing opportunity and I believe it has prepared me well to serve as the next President. As your president, I would gratefully and proudly accept the baton being passed from President Hammond 
and built upon an incredible legacy and continue to, to nurture our many gifts and our many talents to fulfill our mission in extraordinary ways. Our path remains the same. Traversing the roadmap of Duty to Dream, our strategic plan, and Foresight 2020, the Regent strategic plan. Key elements, a continued focus on improving retention and graduation. Diversifying our international partnership portfolio. Further enhancing our relationship with business and industry in really new and meaningful ways with an eye always toward completion and career readiness. A relentless commitment to, and most importantly, celebration of our educational excellence. My leadership will emphasize TLC, transparency, listening, and collaboration. My expectation would be that we come together and think of ourselves collectively, collectively as the guardians of Fort Hayes State University. For I believe that it is our collective talents, not the talent of one person, but our collective talents that will propel us into an extraordinary future. I sincerely thank you for everything that you've done to help me be here today and to contribute to the lives of so many. And I stand for remarks. Or questions, I guess, questions. <laughs> questions, I stand for questions. Thank you. Uh, you. You were already asking me if I was going to ask questions. <laughs> uh, Steve, what is the question? Uh, you came from the East Coast, and you were educated also in the Middle in, in the Middle West in Illinois. And what kind of things that those experiences brought you here? And then in the last few years since you've been here, what have those things back east? that shaped you to come here today and then the Fort Hayes experience to today where you're going to where you're looking at becoming president. What are those things in your personal history have shaped you to this moment? I think more than regional is the type of institutions. So attending a private small uh, liberal arts institution I really learned a lot about how you work differently with students in very, very close relationships, collaboratively, a liberal education was part of that foundation. Um, when I worked at a four-year commuter institution, student engagement is a lot tougher when they're not living on campus. And so really learning how to um, talk to students and listen, to learn how to engage them and help them um, prioritize multiple agendas that they were working on. And then at the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater, which was the other state regional comprehensive, um, they had some two extraordinary uh, missions, I think. One is uh, they had, in the whole Wisconsin system, a mission to work with students with disabilities, and that was something that was in my portfolio, and I served as the director for a while while we were searching, and I learned a lot about student success from people that were really um, had different challenges than the rest of us bring every day and the they also had a strong work with a lot of multicultural students and the stories of those students and their voices some who came to our country um, brought by their parents that didn't even speak English and learned it and was able to go on and complete their college education so the emphasis of um, understanding their journeys um, being part of their community, understanding the cultural implications of their family and their lifestyle and how that interacts with persistence and completion. Those are some things that have stayed with me always. You talked about completion. One of the issues, <coughs> and it just came out in a recent study, and I cover a lot of things in rural development issues, is that in business, rural people are, businesses are saying rural high school students are not coming into colleges and therefore into business, into the business world, ready. We have a real uh, big problem right now, it looks like, in rural high schools, not just here in Kansas, but all over the country, with an issue of readiness. What can you do to address that issue that, it, while I don't think it's a big problem here in western Kansas, it's becoming a, an issue nationally and where we can focus here at Fort Hayes State 
through our, our uh, online programs in working toward educating, uh, helping young people become more ready for college? You know, I think it's not only just the um, readiness of the rural aspect, but I think the other thing that we need to prepare for, and I've seen this more in, in Kansas, is the growth of virtual high schools. And how is that going to shape learning in the future? And one of the brilliant aspects of Fort Hayes State University is we have those three interacting modalities. And those modalities are important for three reasons. Access. Different people at different points in their life having the opportunity to go to college in different places through the virtual college or through international partnerships. The second one is pedagogy. Just understanding that different learning styles will relate to different um, modalities as well. And the third one is a business model because they all have their unique business model and hopefully one of the things that we've done really well at Fort Hayes is make sure when we make business decisions that we make those decisions across the modalities and not just for one. And the other aspect of that in working with our modalities is that um, we did something really right I believe at Fort Hayes State University and that is from day one we said we're going to protect quality by not decentralizing, not taking our virtual college product and putting it over here, but saying the English department chair is going to be in charge of control and hiring and content for every single modality and that it would protect our brand and our quality. And those are things that have positioned us well and that will help, I think, with the readiness aspect. Has it always been a goal of yours to be like a university president? Or? I would say it was a stretch goal. It's been in the back of my mind. Um, certainly, when President Hammond announced his uh, retirement, I felt like that was uh, too soon, that I might not be ready, but I had a, a lot of conversations, and one of the reasons, just to be honest, why I'm here is I, think, I do think that I'm ready and that I can do this well, but the reason why I think this is because of all these people here. They're incredibly talented, and I would step up to a leadership role being surrounded by people that from day one I already know and respect and trust. That's an extraordinary opportunity that I don't think a lot of people have. So you think that would be a plus being familiar with the campus? I think it is the strongest asset. And you're already a big part of that successful team. Huh? I understand the complexities, I understand the culture, um, and I also understand some of the strains and um, things that we need to work on. So the camp, the, these were set up for like campus visits, obviously, for the finalists. Um, what did you do yesterday? I did everything did, every candidate will do. Did you find, see anything new on campus that you hadn't? Well, during the, um, there's a part where you take the uh, candidate on campus tours. And so thanks to Dana, I said, um, you know, I've been in Albertson before, but I'd never been to the observatory. Will you take me up there? So I kind of did some of the back <laughs> vaccine tour, and then I said, you know, I've been into all our athletics facilities, but haven't ever driven out to the turbines. Can we go see the wind turbines? So we did that. So we did some, some fun things like that. So we know your record with uh, student affairs and such, but uh, talk about a little bit what prepares you to, um, to lead the academic offices as well. Well, I have taught at um, most of the institutions that I have worked at. Um, when I spent the 10 years working with the nonprofit association, which was Sigma Kappa Sorority and Foundation, I was uh, invited to be on the faculty of Indiana University on the um, Indianapolis campus, IUPUI. And I taught, it was in actually in my employment contract to teach the graduate courses every semester. Um, I published in the six years that I've been here, I've co-authored three, uh, three chapters in three different books. Um, so I have an understanding of definitely the hard work that it takes to be a good teacher. It takes a lot of preparation. If you want to help students learn and realize that there are a lot of different learning styles, then you have to kind of uh, do different techniques in your classroom. That takes a lot of preparation when you're really dedicated. It's something that I really admire about our faculty because I know we have a lot of innovative of people here. Um, I think, you know, there are other aspects of the academy in terms of hiring and resources and 
and things like that that I've done in other other venues. Um, so those are some things that I've done. Leslie. Tisa, could you describe for us what you see as being the role of research here at Fort Hayes State University? <coughs> Well, um, I think research is very important because it's the production of knowledge. And if we don't have the production of knowledge, we will get um, out of step with where we're going. And so in all of our areas, I think that's really important. Um, one of the things when I talk about student engagement, by the way, is I believe that people need to be really engaged in their environments. And certainly our faculty have contracts that um, emphasize research, um, service, and teaching. And I think teaching is core. But um, our staff also in student affairs have to tell us about their professional development and what they're learning. And when our students graduate from Fort Hayes, hopefully with a liberal education, they will need to keep up with the knowledge that will be expanding in their fields as well. Tisha, you've, been, you've, you've said this, three, this, word three, this phrase three times in your talk already, liberal education. We have here at the <coughs> university quite a number of different elements. We have a, a very strong business school, and we have uh, 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 emphasis on technology. Yet you keep coming back to the concept of a liberal education. Uh, there has been talk that, that liberal education is only necessary for general ed, and that's it, in those, in those fields. Yet you, you emphasize that quite a bit. What is the importance of a liberal education to a person in business, in a person in, in technology? What makes that what makes that element so important and makes that element so important, it seems to you? Because I really believe that we're educating the whole person and we're educating them not for their next career, but for the career after the career after. We're also educating them to be really good citizens. We want them to not only engage in the professional associations, but they, we want them on our PTAs and in our community organizations and our nonprofits. And to be able to keep up with knowledge and to serve successfully in many capacities, you have to learn to think, you have to learn who you are, you have to learn to write, you have to do um, all of those things and be exposed to different ideas that sometimes the general ed does. And I know we have a, um, we're working on our general ed program, but I know that's something we have a strong commitment to. I believe we have more gen ed courses than some of the other region institutions. You've talked about this a little bit, uh, working, you know, under or with Ed Hammond, with someone of that caliber. The what do you think? Like, um, you've learned. I'm sure he's been, or maybe you. I ask you if he's been a mentor of yours. What what you learned from like a mentor from something like that to make to be able to step into a position like this. Yeah, I've learned a lot from President Hammond, of course, and um, also the other seven presidents and the eight board chairs that I've worked with, because they all bring their different um, style and personalities. Um, I really appreciate, um, one of the things I've really learned from President Hammond is his training in debate, which I had no background in at all, and he's able to really hone in on looking at issues in multiple perspectives, and, um, and that helps to inform decisions. That's one of the things that I really appreciate it. Um, so sometimes when I'm trying to think and I want to expand uh, my resources, I'll, I'll ask him uh, what his thoughts are and he always gives me different perspectives that I hadn't thought of. All right, well, I've got one last question. You're <coughs> getting exhausted here. Why you? Why me? Why you? Because I am truly committed to Fort Hayes State University. I have a very diverse background. I know a lot about board management. I know a lot about education. I know a lot about uh, fundraising. And I think my portfolio is, is diverse and that I draw a lot of strengths on that. But most importantly, um, because I want to do this together with these people that I believe in, and I feel like I can make a difference and work together to take us into an extraordinary future. Yes. So what's one thing related to higher education that you've changed your mind about in the last five years?
Um, I really, I'm not really sure I want to say this, but one of the things I keep talking about is being transparent. Um, I think I'm thinking about a social media policy, <laughs> which is why I'm hesitating, which you could say. <laughs> And I'm not sure how to frame that real well, but at the beginning of the conversation, I, I was at one place, I'll just say it this way for now, and watching it and listening, watching how the board interacted with it, watching how the faculty addressed it, watching how the students, um, and knowing that I think we still have um, a lack of shared understanding of where we're trying to go has made me think differently about those issues. Should I just say goodbye now? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again for all the work that everyone here does. I really do appreciate you. And enjoy the, the day. Thanks. Mm -hmm.